coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to another episode of Just Calvin. And on the fourth, I have a name for U.S. Senate. And then on the eighth, I have uh, Edward Edwin, excuse me, to Jesus Christ, the Council of New York. I mean, for those upcoming uh, names. Hello, and welcome to uh, another edition of Just Calvin. I am here with Liv Romano, who is. Uh, I keep forgetting, sorry, uh, with the Maryland Green Party, uh, co-chair, chair, uh, she does mutual funding, uh, she's in, she's, uh, she's for a general strike revolution now, and, uh, if, if you just want to donate to any of her, uh, mutual aid, uh, you can go to a cash app, um, it's basically, uh, money signed, live Romano 526, or Venmo at live underscore Romano. So, uh, how have you, how has your uh, last week been? I know it's been uh, exciting as far as as far as interviews and other personal things, which you can't get into as far as uh, legalities. But how are those shows? And have you been keeping up on um, on other candidates that are going on? And what was your thoughts and opinions on the elections going on today? In fact. Oh my God. Yeah. I can't, I can't believe it's already election day. That is crazy. I have a ballot uh, waiting for me, uh, probably I think right here uh, to be filled out. Um, um, I uh, have not been very well informed about local elections. Um, I have been so, so, so busy uh, 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 in devoting all my time and energy to mutual aid lately. Um if I'm not doing mutual aid uh, myself, whether it's uh, delivering mutual aid kits or um, clothing, um, I am promoting mutual aid, uh, doing interviews, uh, talking about mutual aid, talking about it on um, uh, on my podcast, on um, doing live streams on uh, the Populous Voice Network channel um, that I am uh, the network director of. So um, sometimes, uh, you know, if we if we don't have another show live streaming, I, I I'm able to. Do a quick live stream, and I want to be talking about mutual aid as much as possible because that is the foundation for everything of all the other positive change we want to see in the world. So, right. um, laying that foundation and, and building that framework, I find essential to uh, building up everything else, all these other movements that that we're working on. So, um, it all starts with mutual aid. So, um, a lot of people are like, okay, well, what's mutual aid, and you know, like, what's the definition, and you know, the thing is, like, you're probably already doing it and you don't even realize it. Um, you know, like, your friend's sick. You go over and make them food or, like, you bring you bring some food. Um, you know, you uh, start uh, – well, there's things like, you know, if you walk your neighbor's dog, that's like a dog walking co-op. Start that in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you do a uh, – you watch your neighbor's kids, like, that's a you know, babysitting co-op. Uh, start that. Um, for me, what I've really been focusing on is um, – doing mutual aid kits, which I put in two Ziploc gallon size bags. And um, they consist of, um, they, so they can consist of, you know, I, I, I would say re- uh, recommend that you coordinate it and tailor it to your community. You know your community best. Um, and if you want some ideas, just go talk to people out in the community about what you think would be good items to put in mutual aid bags. But um, there's a lot of different things that you can put in them and they vary. Uh, but what I have been doing are socks, two pairs of socks, because they're the most requested items at homeless shelters. Um, protein shakes, protein bars, baby wipes, disinfecting wipes, uh, band-aids, neosporin, deodorant, um, deodorant, deodorant, soaps, um, travel size, um, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, body lotion, I think that's about it. Um, I also like to hand out bottled waters. Um, and um, if I uh, have any bottled waters left over, which I usually do, um, I go deliver the rest of them to the Red Shed Village, which is um, a little community um, on St. Paul Street off of North Avenue in Baltimore, which is working to help house the unhoused. Um, uh, they have they started out as a site. Um, they were a plot of land. Um, 
and they had a few uh, campsites or tents there. And um, now they've grown to three uh, sheds. And I'm going to actually have a conversation with them, um, Red Shed Village, over the next day or so about um, how we can work on expanding them because um, I have a couple friends in need uh, that I would love to get um, some funding, you know, started right away to getting them um, tents to have them there on their own little plot of land and have their own little little site and then work towards getting them their own shed or own home or whatever we can, um, whatever the next step would be. Um, but I think this would be a great first step. Um, you know, look up, uh, you know, other uh, kind of these things that are in your communities already. This was, um, how did I find? I actually, I used to live right down the street from uh, Red Shed Village, which is how I, I knew about them. But then um, someone um, someone else recommended them. I think from the Green Party recommended them to me. Um, so, you know, just do um, a Google search about like un communities for the unhoused near me or in my community, but I'm sure you can find some things that are already exist. And if not, start it yourself, you know? Uh, that's, you know, that's what I've been doing with my mutual aid network. I'm starting my own mutual aid network. And it's, you know, thanks to all y'all that it's been able to flourish the way it has. Um, you know, we've raised probably over like close to $1,000 now um, for um, all the mutual aid work that, that I've been doing in the communities uh, nearby. So it's absolutely amazing what you can get done by, by yourself and then just asking for help. So much can get done. Um, you know, I know as Americans, we've been, you know, promoted this individualism that we can only get by by ourselves and you're weak and it's not a, a good sign of anything to ask for help, but that's not the case. That is not how we get by as humans. Uh, we thrive by um, helping one another and taking care of each other um, and making sure each other's needs are met. Um, and that, you know, is, is part of what mutual aid is, is building community ties and bonds. So, so that, um, you know, that's part of what mutual aid is in the first place is, is the community building that is a part of that. Mm. Um, so, you know, mutual aid is so, so many different things. And, you know, I, I say you're only doing mutual aid wrong if you're doing it and expecting something in return. Um, so, you know, it's pretty open-ended. Like what, you know, I say, find what you're unique with, like, Art, our artsy Marxist on Twitter, she uses her paintings to like help inspire others about the message of the revolution. Like sh shout out to her. She's absolutely amazing. Follow her, um, get, get some of her artwork. Um, but like that's her contribution to the revolution is, you know, selling her artwork to spread the message. And it's absolutely amazing. Um, and, you know, you just you tap into your own uniqueness about what you want to give back uh, and, 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 you know, work on. For me, I love, like, I love being involved in communities and, and being, like, boots on the ground, community organizing. So, like, you know, delivering mutual aid kits, to, for me, that was the first thing that came to mind. And um, it's been going really well so far. I've been able to meet a lot of people and build a lot of relationships. And, um, like, right now, um, I'm trying to raise some more money um, for, um, a friend who just had all of his stuff stolen from him the other night. Um, so we're doing well. I think we've just raised, I think we're close to a hundred dollars now and we just need a hundred dollars more. And then I can go get him a bunch of more stuff. And we might be able to raise that today because all y'all are so, so goddamn amazing. I can't say that enough. Um, so, um, yeah, we're probably almost at, um, a hundred dollars for that. And we just raised, um, over a hundred dollars, or it was a hundred dollars for clothing and gloves for um, uh, our friend Christy that I just went to Marshall's this morning and bought her um, hoodies, a jacket, and a bag to put it all in. And I also have some sweatpants to give her, so I put all that in her bag, and I cannot wait to give it to her. Um, and then um, we also raised like a hundred twenty dollars to help um, people um, stay in their ho motel room. So I, I'm trying to go back to Baltimore today to go um, right after this call to go give them this money. Um, and, uh, oh, my God, like, we, you know, we've raised over, like, $700 on for me to go do my mutual aid supply runs to get the, the items for my kit. Like, this is amazing. And it's all because I just said. I'm gonna do it myself, but I'm, you know, I'm not, I, mean, I shouldn't say, I'm not doing it myself. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do this with the help of all y'all, but I'm going to take the step and take this initiative to start it in my own community. I took that step.
because I but because I took that step and had all y'all support, that's what made this possible. And as a reminder, where can people donate? Oh, here, you know, I can put it right here. I forgot because I had to, whenever I log into Zoom now, it always logs into the Maryland Green Party. I think you saw that when I first came in here. So no, actually, Liv, no, I didn't. I'll, I'll just okay. right, I'll just right I'll change it for your Twitter, yeah. Uh, so, this so, has, is, so has the has the Maryland Green Party been involved in, in, in what you're doing, or has it just been you? Yes. So we are actually, I had the idea to um, have the Maryland Green Party host a mutual aid event the Friday after Black, uh, excuse me, the Friday after Thanksgiving this year. Very excited about that. We're working on it right now. Um, I, I could use all the help. So if you know anyone who's interested, uh, please send them my way. I need all the help I can get uh, playing this mutual aid event. Um, it's really going to be uh, geared towards... Um, mutual aid fundraising for um the red shed village and like i said trying to get joe and um his friend and his friend's girlfriend housed or get them set up on this um red shed village plot um they're going to be our guests of honor um and like i said the maryland green party is hosting it we might be getting it co-sponsored by uh like baltimore city green party and maybe some other locals um but we are going to i i, I have this vision of it being um this thing called the revolutionary playlist rally and uh we're go going to play songs that uh you know i'm gonna you know, just dance my little ass off to and have a good time and then you know, have a little spiel about like what this song means to the revolution and, you know, why I chose this song and then have some speakers as well who can, and who can also, you know, speak about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the, all the, the uh, money for the tickets, because it's going to be a hybrid event. Um, it's going to be held at the why not lot on um, North Avenue um, in Baltimore. And then um, it's going to be, um also oh, um, put, put all the information in the chat this way sure, uh, hopefully, yes. uh, hopefully it'll be actually on the on the on the interview of course when I, when I put it up sure and i just changed my name that is where oh, my you can donate to that oh me. i see okay um oh, cool. so all right. Um, all the donations for all the monetary donations for the tickets proceeds um uh, again both if you're attending in person or um uh, virtually, which it will be streamed via Zoom. Um, all that money is going to go towards the Red Shed Village. And then all of the uh, material do donations, we're going to ask people to bring um, clothing, um, any leftover food from Thanksgiving, bring it on over. Um, and non-perishable foods, bring it on over. Um, and we're going to split those donations among um, some mutual aid groups in Baltimore City. Um, and, uh uh, good. Uh, do you guys, do you know of, of a time you guys will be starting that day? Um, I think we're probably going to be starting around, um, at probably noon, probably right on noon, because I think what I'm going to do is, um, I'll get to, uh, so I'm in Annapolis right now, so I'm going to drive up to Baltimore City that morning, um, and probably spend, uh, a couple hours, probably from, yeah, a couple hours, um, driving around in a van picking up um picking up friends uh to get them to come to our event um and then we'll do some setting up and then we'll kick off the event at noon and we'll probably last a good four or five hours and then we probably have i i would do a drop off uh run then uh while other people clean up and um that probably call it the night after that uh do you think there'll be a uh a uh like a ongoing or annual thing i would love to make this a monthly thing i would I mean, I, that's a little ambitious but i i would love to i i would not see a reason why anybody wouldn't want to uh uh do stuff like that like once a month sort of thing i mean it, it sounds like it sounds like it would help a lot of people it sounds like it would give a lot of a lot of organization uh some um some some time in the public and to know like rain party and other organizations that may be helping uh, how many organizations uh, would you try to be able to get involved in that i would love to get as many as possible especially local organizations um that's part of what i need help with right now is like organizing with um logistics and media um i i really need some help coordinating that because i want to try and promote this as much as possible um and also um 
uh, to try to make this like a sustainable event so that we can yeah. do this more than once. So, right. um, you know, I, I would really need some help with that. And if we can get some good media coverage and get more partners involved, I think that would go a long way. Hmm. Uh, it sounds like a good idea as far as the part goes. Uh, on a, um, and as far as the news topic in, uh, in uh, Minnesota, uh, what was your thought about the uh, defunding the police? And, uh, and I've seen stories uh, like on Yahoo, where I read yesterday on my, on my, new, on my news uh, that uh, there's some uh, vagueness to it. Uh, they don't really say if they're going to be taking money from the police and putting it into mental health. And the centerpiece of it was someone who may be losing money due to the taking money at, at the police department as far as a private uh, mental uh, health care facility. Uh, so uh, what is your opinion on that? And do you, and do you think that... Uh, the legislation for it was specific on whether that money would go to mental health or not. Well, maybe you can tell me a little bit more about this because this, this is a little news to me. I've, I've, I have, I have not been very up to date on up to date on the news for the past week or two. I've been very busy with my mutual aid. So please tell me more. But, uh, when I when I looked at it yesterday, it stated that there's a ballot initiative in Minnesota where it would defund the police by hundreds of millions of dollars, but it doesn't say whether or not. Specifically, I mean, at least in the article that I read, that it would uh, that money would go directly to mental health. I think it said like a little bit at the last line of the whole thing. So, but I but I I read it and I tried to figure out what the what the uh, the uh, the opposing party said and what the, uh, the and the positive party said about it. And it, it's, it just, it seemed like it was vague in regards to the article. So that's why I was just asking if you had any yeah, opinion was, So did you see anything about what the plan was to use this allocated funding for? Well, supposedly it's to uh, put it back into the uh, Committee for Mental Health, but it wasn't specific uh, more uh, as far as details uh, about it. it yeah. Basically, it just said the talking points, the usual talking points of against yeah. and for. So I didn't know if you, I didn't know if you had uh, had four hundred four hundred billion about that. It's just that is yeah that sounds really shady to me. That sounds like political bullshit. Like that's the thing. That's that's the problem right now with with all of this. It's politics, and it's supposed to be policy making. We have politics and politicians when we should be having policy making and public servants. Right. Um, so that really makes it tricky to really trust the legislation that's going to get tr passed because like what you're saying right now, like, okay, we, we need, we need it written down where this money is going for, why we're doing this in the first place. If we don't have that plan, what are we doing this for anyways? That makes it so easy to get corrupted and, and manipulated when you don't have that written down plan. I mean, even, and when you have a written down plan, it can get, uh, you know, manipulated and corrupted. But um, like what you're saying, this vagueness, uh, that that can be manipulated so easily, so easily. All right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Uh, what, what, uh, what are you planning on doing after this? As far as like a mutual aid thing? Uh, you try Yeah, to I'm going to go. Let's see. I, I just received, um, I think we've raised over $100 now. Um two yep yep i have i think i have a few more um let me see let's see um yeah i just received a 35 dollar donation so i think we're at 100 now for um to get our friend some more um stuff um that was just stolen from him so um i'm gonna probably go do another marshall's trip and then i will go ahead to baltimore to go distribute um also uh, i i just got Christy, um, all of her things um, th this morning, and I wasn't able to find her, so I I'm also trying to find her to give her all of her stuff, and also our friends, uh, the money for their motel room. I'm also trying to find them, um, and uh, give them that money. So I'll uh, probably go do another mutual aid run today. Uh, you have a question? I was going to say, uh, during that time you do the uh, the the event, uh, send me some clips of it, and I'll try to put it up on my uh, along with my news. Uh, that would be great. And uh, also you. the and also the information that you have for the organizations that are, are that, that you will be uh, getting to help you with this. Let me know so I can then uh, speak about them too. That would be great. Yes, so, I will definitely keep you in in the loop. Thank you, Calvin. Okay, and uh, one, more, one more time, just put in the uh, in the in the comments uh, where uh, uh, what you're doing and all that stuff, so that way people can see. Uh, where exactly uh, uh, is going on as far as uh, events you're helping okay. now with some of that? 
the Maryland. Do you want me to DM it to you? Or do you want me to just put it in the chat right now? Put it in the chat right now because that way people okay. can see it. Yeah. The Hopefully. Maryland Green Party is hosting a mutual aid event on Friday. Oh, is it 1127? Yeah, I think it is 1127. On the West Coast, yes. Time-wise? Um, no, uh, yeah, 1127. No, sorry, no, 1127, the date, sorry. Okay. Um, um, yeah. At the Why Not Lot in Baltimore. And okay, just put it in the chat. Cool, all right. Hopefully people can see that and know, and know where it is. Thank you. Well, thank you, and uh, thanks for being on. It was uh, it was good to talk to you again, and uh, maybe I'll have you on in a week or so to discuss uh, any elections that you may want as far as far as the work goes, and updates on uh, what you're doing, and uh, yes. other than other than what, what I see on uh, on Twitter. So, uh, thanks for being on, and I uh, hope you I hope you keep going as far as far as the work goes, and don't uh, don't drink too much in uh, in, uh, in uh, energy drinks. No, oh, I don't touch that stuff. I, I, this is my, this is my, my caffeine intake. Actually, I'm a coffee addict. This okay. is my in moderation, my soda. Okay, well, there you go. Well, have a good day. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Calvin. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Well, you just saw Delilah. No, not Delilah. I'm sorry. You just saw Liv. Uh, tomorrow, Delilah's going to be on. Uh, she's running for uh, Green Party. Uh, uh, she's running for Governor of Green and uh, Texas Green Party. Also, Hank for U.S. Senate will be on the uh, day after that. And Edward Jesus will be on the 8th. So look forward to doing that. And uh, stay tuned. Be a there. Hey, welcome to uh, the Global Green News. Um, I, need, I need to talk about something before I get with the, you know, with the news. I got a flyer in the mail for uh, in Ohio uh, for uh, Issue 7, which... According to the flyer, it says uh, it's a misguided ballot measure that will hurt Columbus and its workers. Columbus is already leading the way on renewable energy. We don't need an outside group with the history of legal issues and shady practices dictating our, our uh, budget. And then it goes on to say, join Columbus Community Labor, Environmental, Civic, and Business Organizations in the United States, uh, Issue 7. And it has three X's, of course, and then um, it says uh, it takes 87 million out of the city's general fund. It takes uh, will cause massive cuts to city services and devastating cuts to the capital budget that take that take fund budget that take funding. Because no, I'm sorry, yeah, that that take funding from street repairs, uh, fire trucks, and sidewalks. Here's the thing: from what I've seen. Our travels in Columbus. Uh, if we're if they're taking money out of, out of projects, they're not doing the projects because there's been potholes and there's been messed up roads and stuff of that nature. So if they're taking money out of a general fund that's supposed to update uh, the city to be energy efficient, well, then that's a good thing because then that means. Um, whatever environmental catastrophe that Ohio is liable to experience will be lessened. Um, and if they fix the roads uh, or stuff of that nature, then it'd be easier for trucks to get here and for commerce to get here, stuff of that nature. Um, as far as I'm in, <clears throat> there's a, article in the Columbus Dispatch. Uh, Columbus voters who decide on the murky issue that would divert 87 million from green energy. Now, we have to put this in context. Uh, Columbus, had, well, Ohio, has three fracking places. I don't mean freaking uh, three effing places. I mean uh, literal companies that frack. Let me see if I can find that now. Ah, here we go, I think. Let's see, I looked up fracking company and companies in Ohio. There's Ohio Rack. Uh, there's Producers Service Corp. 
so there's the higher, of course, for fracking jobs, uh, hydraulic fracture wells. So it's obvious that this is uh, gearing towards people not wanting to maybe affect their business. Well, here's the problem with that is Columbus as a city has already decided not to use water uh, that has previously been used to frack uh, in the substance that uh, helps to defrost or keeps the roads from being all that slick during the winter. Uh, it just makes better sense if they go with energy efficiency rather than with water that's been used to frack. Uh, fracking itself damages not only the, the uh, ground surface, it damages the soil and takes out nutrients from the planet that the planet can never replenish. So the more we frack, the less this earth is able to sustain itself, which means in the future, that there's been so much talk as far as when that's what, what will happen in the future, but for momentarily, it will uh, damage the planet to the point where the degrees, even though in the past degrees have gone up, by the way, uh, due to human activity, uh, no matter what it is, uh, it has, human activity has heightened the degrees that the uh, planet has uh, uh, raised in temperature. Again, people say, well, uh, the temperature on the planet goes up anyway. The problem with this whole thing is the process, is the um, how much in comparison that without human activity on this planet, uh, how far it would have taken for this planet to go into the automatic recycle because the planet does have a recycling period. Um, every million years or whatever, whatever it is, I don't know, but I know that it's done that a couple of times since the planet's existence. But as humans are accelerating that process, which means the possibility of whatever comes up in regards to the recycling process this planet has to go through, uh, will be catastrophic for us as humans and for the future. So to vote yes on the budget for this to make the possibility of making uh, Ohio, Columbus in particular, a energy efficient place, I think is worth the $87 million. That's better than um, fracking that will cost even more in the future. Uh, trillions and billions of dollars worth of damage uh, in part of the environment in, in, in later date. Anyway, so that's my little two cents on this. This is why I tell people that no matter where you are, if, if you can, write in or vote for a Green Party, a third party, uh, especially one that is more environmental, uh, environmentally conscious, uh, wage conscious, you name it, don't vote for a two party. A two party has been messing this country up for hundreds of freaking years. This will continue to do it because of the money that they get for contrib contribution for ads and what dinners or whatever else it comes from those people that they work for, not us. Anyway, that's beside the point now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, anyway, so on with the Green Party. Uh, yes, and I hope you enjoyed the uh, uh, the interview I just had with um, uh, Liv Romano. Uh, she does a lot of uh, humanitarian work with regards to her community, and she is a part of the Green Party of Maryland, apparently. So anyway, let's see, is there anything new Green Party was here? I guess there is. Okay. Okay, so let's go to that. I'm on uh, news, just so you know, and this is French. I don't know French. Is there any, uh... And my apologies, it's not actually French, which means, uh, uh, anyway, I'm able to, I'm just able to read in, uh, in uh, English, uh, DRC President Felix Shisakadi uh, orders the suspension of all dubious contracts in terms of forest concessions. This is uh, from today. Yeah, uh, the President of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Felix uh, again, uh, 
Shezekedi, during, uh, during a meeting, uh, the council ministers demanded the suspension of all dubious contracts in terms of forest concessions. He asked his minister on the environment, Eva Baziabi, uh, Biaza, uh, wait, I'm sorry, Bazaba, how do you say that, uh, to draw up the list and present it to the next cabinet meeting. Uh, the measures were was welcomed by the environmentalists and the DRC, who believe that this decision marks a step in the right direction in the context of natural protection. In 2020 alone, 4 million 600 uh, hectares of Congolese uh, forests were fraudulently sold, according to Radio France. International France, uh, French, uh, which quotes the NGOs operating permits disguised as a safeguard contract or concessions granted without respect for the procedures. In quotes, first, the fa very fact that this issue can be on the agenda is a good start. We therefore welcome this decision uh, very favorably, especially since we had addressed appeals to the, to the Minister of the Environment who did not react at all, that the president received and, had, and who had to draw her attention to these questions, said the uh, said Augustine uh, Poy, uh, legal advisor to Cadelt, who recalled the president's request to suspend the questionable contracts pending a wider audit as a signal of hope, as the UK is hosting the 26th Glasgow Climate Change Conference or COP26, all eyes are on the Congo Basin Forest, which is the second green lung on the planet after the Amazon Basin. Faced with global warming, the DRC wants to position itself as a solution, a solution country, but Irene Wabiwa uh, Betaka of uh, Greenpeace Africa warns there cannot be at the, at the time, uh, at the same time, excuse me, an inventory and the end of the an inventory and the end of the moratorium on new forest titles as announced in July. The forestry industry is not under control right now. It is inconceivable to think of ex extending the same industry to more than 30 million, 50 million, it depends. By lifting the moratorium, we must first start to manage what exists well before starting to expand these same spaces, said Wibawa. Wabiwa, excuse me, Wabiwa. The head of the International Congo Basin Forest Project of Greenpeace Africa encourages the president of DRC to remain vigilant and to ensure the execution and effective implementation of this decision by the Deputy Prime Minister. She clarified that His Excellency President Shizekadi's uh, decision against the illegal actions of the former Minister Nyamu Gabo sends an important message to the Congolese people and their government. It is also a red light, uh, red light for the project of Ms. Eve Bazaiba, current Minister of the Environment, to open a highway to deforestation by predators at the Congolese forest by lifting the moratorium on new industrial concessions. Greenpeace Africa reiterates its call for the maintenance of the moratorium on new industry logging concessions in order to avoid the social and climatic disasters that expansion of the forest industry would cause. And don't forget, there are elections going on here in the U.S. Uh, Madeline Hoffman is running for governor in New Jersey today. Her and her cohort are uh, running against Democrats and Republicans. So if you are in New Jersey and you're listening to this, get out and vote for Green Party. Uh, and also there's a, 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 a election in, I think, Georgia, I'm not sure about that, uh, where... Uh, Basically, a, uh, a uh, established Democrat is going against an established Republican. So, anyway, but there are other races going on, or will be going on anyway. Let's see. Uh, this is this one is new for me. It's uh, Medford for Ward 13. Uh, it, it said there are more candidates running for Ward 13 this a year than have in quite some time. 
I think this reflects the growth of satisfaction with our current representation. Changing changes happening in, in Minneapolis, and don't want to sit on this. And I don't want to sit on the sidelines. Uh, it's time for us to take an action or active role in making things right. So this person is my uh, another person is Mike Norton for Miss for Minneapolis City Council. Um, in Ward 13, uh, we don't share the same views on everything, but we do agree that progress is needed now rather than the statute status quo. Rank uh, Herman, uh, Rank Medford, and Mike number two, one and two. We go vote today and let's start moving forward. And that is be from Katie Medford, who's running for City Council Ward 13. Uh, you can go to Katie Ford. Uh, uh, can you forward, excuse me, 13.com. That is K A T I forward 13.com. Okay, other people who are running, other than uh, Katie Mitford and uh, Mike Norton, um, both uh, Cam Gordon also running in uh, Minnesota. Uh, Edwin De Jesus, who will be here in a couple of days, um, is running in New York. Uh, they, again, you also have uh, uh, Matt Hoffman, who's running for a Green Party in uh, New Jersey governorship. See, you also have Kearney Warren as Chester Water Authority, uh, or running for that anyway. Uh, see, you also have uh, Dominique Faison, who is uh, running for LD11 seat. Let's see. You have Barry Bender for Ocean County Commissioner. You also have, I just said, uh, Matt Hoffman from New Jersey Governor. Let's see. Got the people. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bart Everson, I believe, running in New Orleans. Let's see. Lorena Burgess. Uh, she, she's running. About that. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, Lorraine, uh, yeah, Lorraine Burgess is running in Louisiana. Uh, let's see, uh, Craig P Pietano for, for Council at Large, New Jersey. Let's see, Connor Maboni for Pittsburgh City Council, District 4. Let's see, we also have a Claretta. And Duckett Freeman uh, for Langston, uh, uh, Michigan. Let's see, we also have what is this? Uh, anyway. Anyway, so there are quite a few Green Party members running for all kinds of districts and all kinds of seats. So if you see a Green Party candidate on your ballot, vote for them. If you do want actual change, otherwise you'll begin the same old, same old, and we have to find out the same old, same old is not the same as old, as far as that part goes. Um, yeah, anyway, that's what I got for today, as far as that part goes. Uh, I may be on later on if I find any um, election results. Uh, if not, I will either brag or at least talk about uh, elections uh, tomorrow. Thanks for uh, listening. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and please subscribe to my anchor.fm slash just Calvin. Thank you. Peace out for now.